Okay. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aya Milion. I'm currently a sophomore at Interlake High School, and today I'll be your guys' storyteller. With the permission of Tilghra Books, I will be reading Bilal ibn Rabbah, the first Muazzin of Islam, by Shahada Shiro Abdul Haq. Um, the story contains seven stor stories within it, and I'll be reading two for you guys today. So, inshallah, we'll get started. Born into Slavery March 5, 580, in the Arabian city of Mecca, a black child of African descent was born. His name was Bilal ibn Rabbah. Bilal was enslaved. One day, he would become one of the most shining examples of wisdom and spiritual excellence in the history of Islam. His life began around the time that the Messenger of God, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, honored the world with his birth. Bilal's father, Rabbah, came from Abyssinia, an ancient land called Ethiopia in modern times. His mother, Hamama, was an Abyssinian princess. Both his parents were captured in war and sold as slaves. Treated in the marketplace like property, they were treated as if they weren't really human beings with feelings or rights of their own. Bilal would be born into bondage. He would have no choice but to work for a cruel enslaver named Umayya ibn Halaf in Mecca. Rabbah and Hamama had two other children after Bilal, a son named Khalid and a daughter named Bufayra. At seven or eight years old, Bilal began working exhaustingly without pay. He would herd sheep in Mecca's rough mountains every day under the scorching sun. He went hungry most of the time and was always skinny. Unfortunately, there were people who despised Bilal just because he was enslaved. They called him Ibn Selda, son of a black woman, intending to assault him and his ancestry. Many talked down to him to make themselves feel superior. Bilal's torture. Mecca's rulers feared that the swelling number of new Muslims would produce an uprising. They had to act fast. They wanted to make Bilal regret the day he embraced Islam and strike fear into the hearts of all the enslaved. The so-called nobles quickly gave Umayyah ibn Khalaf approval to bind Bilal and drag him through the city streets at high noon under the scorching desert sun. People spilled out from their homes. Some took pity on Bilal, others laughed. If the children taunted the poor man, imitating the adults. Bilal hardly noticed the crowd. Physical pain left him almost unconscious. Umayyah ibn Khadaf's men were exhausted as they dragged Bilal in the terrible heat. They had to take turns resting when they placed the Prophet's companion on the burning sand and tied his hands and feet to stakes in the ground. Deny Muhammad, Umayyah yelled, kicking Bilal's barely responsive body. Deny Muhammad or face a dire end. Bilal was unable to answer. I will be a laughing stock if I cannot produce a change in the slave, Umayya thought, exploding with rage. He grabbed the whip and lashed Bilal until he completely blacked out. A free person in his heart, Bilal would not respond in the way his abusers wanted. Nothing could make him re-announce his faith. All he wanted from life was to be a good person. Every day, the stone-hearted Umayya tortured Bilal in different ways. Bilal's only response was to utter, Ahad, Ahad, one, one God alone. Soon Umayyah's patience ran out. He wondered if he should kill Bilal on the spot. That will only make us look weak, said Abu Jahl, only concerned about their prideful image. On a frighteningly hot day, they put Bilal in an armored suit and shackled him to the ground under the boiling sun. I will never associate partners to God, said Bilal, if and if it means my death. His torturers removed the armor and Umayyah ordered them to place a giant boulder on his bare chest. As several men struggled to lift the heavy stone, they were amazed by Bilal's endurance. Bilal wasn't the only one who faced brutal persecution. Other enslaved people experienced such horroring violence. One of them, a man named Ammar ibn Yasser, will look back on those horrible days. They tortured us to make us say what they wanted, even if it was just with our tongues, not with our hearts, he recall. But Bilal would only say what his heart told him. One God, God is one. That is all I will be reading from this book today, but I do recommend that you guys check it out and um, further read the other stories. It really goes in depth. 
about Bilal's life and when he first met the Prophet, peace be upon him, and how he was treated as a slave. Um, MCLC and other MAPS programs will be celebrating Black History Month. MCLC special guest storytellers next month will be from the African American Writers Alliance. So please stay tuned for more details that MCLC and other MAPS programs will be sharing for Black History Month. Um, on that note, I just want to talk a little bit about what Black History Month means to me. I want to reflect about what, or I, oh, sorry, Black History Month is a time where we can really reflect on the African Americans that made a big impact on our life and what they had to go through for us to live our life like this. So, um, they weren't really fighting, they weren't really fighting for their life, but they were also fighting for our life. So I think it's really important that we honor and highlight that. Um, that being said, you guys should comment down below what Black History Month means to you, and we'll see you guys next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.